Hi, it's Susan. Welcome back to my channel. I am outside here, so you are likely to hear chainsaws and other construction equipment, but I'm going to do some work with some alcohol inks on fabric. So I figured the more ventilation, the better. And Zoe's out here with me, so who knows what kind of noises we're going to hear, but I will last as long as I have fabric to color or until my camera gets to, my phone gets too hot. So what I do when I am coloring fabric with alcohol inks is I just put it on a tray, put some parchment paper or vellum or whatever I want to get some extra color with underneath, and then I just start playing. And what I really want today are more tones, so I'm going to try and not go crazy. The biggest difference in doing, ah, right away I go right off the thing, in using alcohol inks on fabric is you don't get quite the bloom that you might get on uh, paper. You can still use the alcohol with it, but it's just not quite the same. And I'll show you what I mean here. So it will help it spread, and you'll get a little bit of the bloom, but you know it doesn't go quite as crazy, which in some ways is kind of nice. And then of course, as the fabric gets wet with the alcohol, it sort of helps the next layer that you put down. What I have here is old sheets. Uh, I had a linen um, drapery that I had found at Goodwill and it cut into these really nice little strips for me that will be great for my stitch meditations or putting them into journals. This is oregano and I never remember. It's kind of brown but I think it's got green tones. But let's see if we can stick with the greens. I had such a nice response to a recent stitch meditation that was like a landscape that I really want to get some more colored fabric rather than fabric that I just bought so I can do some more and I'd like to do some a little t bigger than my little four inch squares. So we'll see. Did, uh, we, I'll probably only last as long as my alcohol does. I just realized I did not bring my big bottle of alcohol out here and definitely takes longer. Yeah, I shouldn't have put that oregano in there. That wasn't what I wanted. That's okay. We make it work and some of this fabric will find its way into the giveaway journal. I am still working on various items to work into that journal. I appreciate all of you hanging out with me while I do it and I'm sorry we did you know, zoom right on past 2,000 subscribers and I wasn't ready. I really appreciate you guys supporting me so much. If you haven't already, I would love it if you could give me a thumbs up. It's an easy way for viewers to show their support for people that they enjoy on YouTube. Doesn't cost you a dime, just a little thumbs up and it tells YouTube that people are enjoying my videos. All right, so we're getting somewhere on this one. We are getting somewhere. Let's add some meadow. I find it harder to get rid of harsh lines, so when this stuff doesn't want to squeeze in fabric, when you've got it on paper, you can blow it around in various ways, but you can't really blow the ink. And I'll show you what I mean. I've got my little blower that I normally use, but see, it doesn't do any good on fabric. It's not going to go anywhere. But again, it's okay. Make it work. And we remember that this does not dry the way it looks right now. It changes as it dries, which of course is part of the fun of the alcohol inks, just like the distress sprays. You just can't really be sure what you're going to get. This one I really muddied. Oh, there's some blue in that. Interesting. I don't know what one that was that had some blue, but we'll take it. Okay, it is better working outside here. I mean, I can smell the alcohol, but it's not nearly as bad as in the house. With the AC going in the house. We are hot, hot, hot here in my area of the mountains in California, which is kind of surprising, really. This late in the year, they just issued a big fire watch for the next few days because it's supposed to get hotter and hotter. Just a little. I want everything covered. 
on paper, I don't mind having some white places, but since I know that I want to use this as fabric. All right, I'm not thrilled, but I know myself enough to know it will change as it dries because it's so dark. And I will come back and show you guys what it looks like when it's dry. All right, let's grab another thing here. You know what, I probably don't even need any paper on this one. Let's do a big piece. So of course it's gonna be very different on a colored piece of fabric. And what I want is shades of green, so this should, in theory, give me more shades of green if I just put green on it, right? Then I can make landscapes with hills. I think I used this darker green on the one before and it was kind of interesting the way it came out. So hard to squeeze those, wow. Just looks more interesting than just a solid shade of green, to me at least. Your mileage may vary. All right, let's see, what else can we add in there? Okay, this is a good time for the oregano up here. I'm just trying to build a palette of earthy colors. I'm just working with the Tim Holtz alcohol inks right now. I have not opened my Marabou alcohol inks yet. They are, I did check though, they are all still 50% off at joggles.com and you get 50% um, off for the complete set of 28, I think it's 50 something for it, but that gives you a ton of colors to play with. So I kind of think I'm gonna work through most of my uh, Tim Holtz inks and then, oh, so it's the botanical that's got the hint of blue. Okay, I don't want more blue in there. Let's go, let's add some rust. Hmm, but that's not gonna make me green. Let's stick with green, Susan. You said you wanted greens. So let's give some greens. Although this isn't a cheap way of coloring fabric, it's a little bit easier than making a whole bunch of different dye baths if I'm trying to do natural dyes. Um, of course, you could do Easter egg dyes and Kool-Aid and Rit dyes and all those other things. Whatever floats your boat. While I try to use mostly natural products, this is obviously not natural, but I'm okay with that. Citrus. I just limit my non-natural items. And I am wearing gloves again today because remember alcohol inks will stay in your hand in a heartbeat. Let's add some dandelion. So remember this paper or this fabric started off kind of a pale green. Okay, I'm back. Sorry for that abrupt ending there. I didn't have my phone on Do Not Disturb and the phone rang. So I'm back and on the plus side, that means my phone got a chance to cool down a little bit. So maybe I can go a little bit farther and I will put some new gloves on. I've got two different colors of fabric here. I've got some white and tan. And I'm working mostly with cottons and linens today, old sheets, although I do have, if I get to it, some uh, upholstery material I want to try. So let's see how I can be with just getting green, green, green. Although this is, oh, this is meadow, so this is the one with the blue in it. Shades of green. And 
And then of course I'm gonna have to do another one of these showing you what I do with this with distress sprays. There's just something about the tones that you get from these alcohol inks and distress sprays that just add some interest to otherwise just normally colored fabric. And I know it seems crazy because I have all this fabric right in the closet and you guys saw the haul that I just got at the Fabmo. But I discovered when I was doing my stitch meditations that I really, really liked stitching on the fabric that I had done some coloring on myself. And of course, you know, we like doing it with the eco-dyed fabric and the tea-dyed, but sometimes we just want some color in our lives. All right, two shades of green. And let's just add some alcohol and see if we can get this to spread. This fabric's really thin, so I'm hoping I guess I could have like saturated my fabric in alcohol before I put it out here. Did not do that. Don't know if I have enough. I need to get some more of this 99 proof alcohol. These cookie sheets that I'm using, these are the dollar store cookie sheets. Okay, I like that combo a lot and I use these for so many things. So that was Meadow. This, that, that's exactly what I was hoping I was going to get with greens. I really, really like that. Meadow and citrus. Good combination. All right. There we go. A little bit more right in there. So nice. Whoa. So as long as the fabric is damp, it will continue to wick the color into different areas. to go get some more alcohol. I should have filled my bottle when I was in the house. Shoulda, woulda, coulda. Alright, I am liking that green a lot. Not botanical. What can we add? This is slate. Let's see what that is on just the sides of this. Oh, it looks like that citrus had a little bit of blue look in it, too. Hmm. Can't resist the oregano. Makes me think of forest moss in the distress sprays. Because I think it just has a lot of different colors in it and does some neat things. Gonna, after I get these done, I'm going to have to pause it again and go get some more alcohol because really I just kind of want to pour it on here. So you can turn these on themselves and let the ink go that way too. Let's just see, wind it kind of, wad it up a little bit. <clears throat> and get it really saturated. And it just becomes like a paper towel that's sopping up the watercolor paint. Yeah, and then we can spread this one out a little more. That's looking kind of interesting. It's so hot out here, <clears throat> the fabric's gonna dry super fast. Need some more green. Let's see. I'm 
So paint drying, right? Watching somebody do something. I, oh, I forget that I've got the camera on and I forget I should keep talking. So I'm just sort of like zoning out here. Sorry about that. But that is kind of the way I work. Okay, that needs more green too. Let's see. Call that one about good. The meadow seems to have the blue in it too. Hmm. Uh, maybe time to open the marabou inks because I think I have more color choices. I don't have that many ranger inks. Okay, I'm almost all out of this alcohol, so let's just dump it. All right, I'm going to pause it and go in and get some more alcohol, and then I will be back. Oh, Zoe said somebody's going by, and she must announce it to the neighborhood that she lives here. All right, I brought my alcohol bottle outside. So we will refill it right over the fabric so if it spills, it's okay. Wow, it's probably only enough to refill this thing one more time. Like I said, since the fabric was dry, It doesn't uh, go as much, but I'm going to just sort of play like, ooh, look at that. That's kind of neat. I like that. Must be somebody Zoe really hates going by. There are a few dogs in the neighborhood she is not a fan of. All right, and this one's still got some of the brown on it, so we're going to open this up. And go back to our oregano. And see what we can get here. Oh, checking to make sure I did actually turn the camera back on. There should be some nice tones. And I know it looks really dark and blotchy right now, but trust me, this is going to dry in a very neat way. And then I'll do another one of these using the Distress Sprays. Alright. So I'm just going to kind of wad this up. Any other color that's here, it should spread throughout there. Nice. That's some good color on there. All right, this needs a new place to rest. Hmm. I like that one. I think that's going to be cool. All right, let's do some more. Let's see, a smaller one. And... Uh, this is some upholstery fabric. It is all cotton. So we'll see what we can get to have happen on that. And this, we're just gonna kind of wad up. We also we got some more little pieces in here that are just nice to sop things up with and then they make really good accents on my stitch meditations. What else? There's another small one. All right. Let's see. We'll do the yellows and oranges, maybe. Sunset orange. Let's see if we can get a little bit of a sun here. And maybe here. Had a lot of fun doing the uh, running stitch meditation with a sun that happened just from doing something like this. Zoe's going to be so tired when we finally go back in the house. Alright, so we get a nice circle going. She runs down to the street side 
and she's got a toy there at the fence and she grabs it and shakes it from side to side. So she redirects all her anger at the toy. All right, I really like that yellow circle. That's pretty nice. I need to get some more white out and just make some circles maybe. That would be kind of cool. This one we just wanna, we wanna get just a color in there. All right, roll it around. So then you get some different tones and it gets a little damper. Uh, red pepper, no, terracotta, that's kind of a shade of orange. It's kind of a red orange, huh? But again, we don't know what they're going to dry like, so it could be totally different. And let's see, this is pieces of a sheet, and it's got a pattern in it, of course, so I want to see what I can get. here. That's just gonna be like a candle wick taking the color around and around. This is mushroom which sort of looks like gray and I don't think of gray when I think of mushrooms I think of brown but that's just me. So let's add some dandelion. What are we going to get? I don't know if we'll get much of it, but we'll see. It's a pretty good looking sun there. I like that one. It's not doing so well. All right, I'm gonna add some alcohol now. Are you bored yet? I hope not. And tomorrow I will do a show and tell of it dry. I'm really happy with these circles, so I wanna be careful with them. It's kind of interesting having the stripes show through on these, so we'll see. We will see what we can do here. I think, where's the botanical? I'm going to add that into the mix on these. I'm not so sure about that. But the thing is, even if it's just really, you know, just comes out really dark and muddy, then for doing nature things, whether it's a journal or a stitched piece, you still have a really interesting texture. Okay, yeah, that one's really blue, interesting. So it's a challenge to figure out how to get what you want without being able to blow the ink around, but I'm really happy with those circles. All right, more alcohol. I'm gonna get this thing really saturated and then squish it up. So what I'm learning on this one, it doesn't look like it's going to cover the pattern well. Some of the sheets that have patterns on them, I can get um, pretty good coverage and then the color or the pattern that's in the background just gives some texture. So that's a eh for me, but that's okay. I will spread the color around on these other things. It's getting a little more interesting. And I know they look really dark now, but I bet you tomorrow they're going to be very light. All right, let's move this one out of the way. Right, let's do some more circles. And 
do some on this. And we can do some on this. And what else do we have? When I buy sheets and they have the, the hem folded down at the top, you know, where, and then it's usually top stitched. Well, some of these sheets have got really wide hems at the top and it's perfect for this. Uh, let's just do these two. I'm looking for something else that's little. I thought I brought some more little scraps out here, but evidently I did not. All right, so let's start with butterscotch. And we'll do another butterscotch here. And we'll do one on the tan linen. Tiny circles. I don't have that much control when I'm doing that. All right, and then maybe we'll do some circles that start with the yellow first. That was not a very good circle at all. That's a little better. Irregular circles. We will embrace the irregular circle. That's just going to be a blob. That was not what I intended there. Most of what I do with this kind of stuff is never what I intended. Serendipity in art, right? Okay, if the circles get cut off part way, because then they just become something really nice to do on the horizon. All right, I'm going to add some alcohol and see if we can get them to be a little bigger circle. So, of course, because I was thinking sun when I was doing these. They're not turning out looking much like the sun. <laughs> I should have stuck with just the yellow. Oh well. It will all be something. I don't know what something it will be, but it will all be something. So we can add some more yellow in if that's gonna work or not. And of course we won't know if it works until it's all dry. That definitely doesn't look like the sun. <laughs> Okay, I'm zoning out again. All right, I'm gonna stop on those. There might be some I can use. Okay. Let's see what we got. This is a long one. Let's do some, oh, where are my scissors? Scissors, come out, come out wherever you are. I don't know where my scissors have gone. One of you borrowed my scissors. Could you please bring them back? Huh. There they are at the very bottom, of course, right? They're always in the last place you look. Only because I want this to all fit on the tray. Okay. Let's do a different color palette. Again, just trying to get some colored material that I can play with in various ways. So I've got some white and some off-white. Let's do blues. I only have two blues. But maybe if we mix something else with it, we'll get something interesting. Uh. Let's see, 
what we can do here. It's a different blue. This one's turquoise. This was really pretty. I remember that. It's interesting. The blue is coming out just as blue on the tan as it was on the white. Adding some alcohol so I can get some variations in here. Distress sprays go a lot faster than this because you don't. I mean, you can use the squirt bottle. Of course, I could have a squirt bottle of alcohol, but I'd probably go through it way too fast. Let's just join these. And add a little bit of slate and do it over here and see what we get. Let me add it to the blue. Hmm. Not loving it. So we already had a big long walk today and now she's just going crazy again. Just adding some more slate just so that we might as well just go ahead and get part of this to be that color. And I'm thinking that's going to dry kind of rock like, so that part is good. I could use some rocky looking fabric. Shades of gray. And let's just add the blue over the slate. See if we can get a darker blue. And just very little bits of blue there, and we're going to see if we can lighten it even more with the alcohol. I find it so hard, even though I want like solid colors done with this, I find it hard to not mix. All right, that I don't like. And this is aquamarine. of seashore looking stuff, right? A little bit, kind of, sort of. Kind of, sort of. I wonder if I soak the fabric in a lower grade alcohol and then put it out and then use the higher alcohol content to move things around. I wonder what that would be like. If that would make a difference. Should be called dropper art. And I like that dark blotch there. Right, this one I'm not crazy about, so scrunch it up and see what we can get out of it that way. Ah, that already looks more interesting. It's got some tones in it. All right, same thing here. Let's just yeah, it's got a little bit of tone in it. And of course, I can iron this later. I'm going to open this up a little get a little bit more in here and this one needs a little more I 
All right, some shades of blue. They will not be this dark tomorrow, I promise you. All right, I do have some purple things there. So, some, oh, let's find a different tray. I don't like that tray. Some white. Did not bring a paper towel out here. Oh well. Uh, let's see. This. I'm going to save that one for another blue green combo thing. Let's try this one with the pinks and purples <clears throat> and see what we can get. All right. We have this is going to be a long old video. Now it's like watching a live without me being live, right? <laughs> I suppose I could edit out a bunch of stuff, but I probably won't. I will warn you that right now. I probably won't. But I'll do this color so we can see a few different colors on the fabric. And then I'll stop. Ah, this is one of those ones that doesn't want to squeeze. So hard. And they don't want to squeeze. All right, let's get some alcohol on the thing first. You know what, let's just get it a little more wet. This one's gonna look psychedelic. It'll be my hippie piece of fabric, right? Since I do live in hippie central. But it's much more subtle when it's done. I kinda like that wild plum, that's pretty. I like that one. Cranberry. Comes out brown, but I bet you it dries with more of a red. All right, and we need more alcohol. And we are just gonna do this. We're just gonna dump it out. And we're gonna see how crazy this is gonna get. All right, that's all my alcohol. We're gonna scrunch this one up and then I'll call it. See all that ink down there. So let's just wipe all that up. This should have some nice tones in it. I can already see the tones. And because this is sopping wet, I can also take another piece of material and sop up some of the color. Won't have quite the tones, but it can be built upon. Let's just add a little bit of purple in there because, you know, why not? We're gonna mix these guys all up together. Abracadabra! Alright, we have strange, strange pink creatures, which is fine. It's all fine, it's all gonna be usable. Really soft fabric there. Alright, I will take off my gloves, turn this off. I will uh, come back and show you what these guys look like when they're dry tomorrow. Thanks so much for watching. Bye for now.